Welcome, this is an IGET concept module. It deals with Landsat 8 digital numbers to top of atmosphere reflectance equations, both for the OLI and for the TIRS sensors. This is part two of a two part concept module, module, and it focuses on the exact equations used for correcting those digital numbers for the two types of sensors on Landsat 8. That is the operational land manager sensors, the OLI sensors, and the thermal infrared sensors or tier sensors. If you need more background information, please see part one of this concept module. Landsat imagery pixels display brightness based on a digital number on the date that it's collected. Digital numbers are different for the uh, scaled to different values for the different Landsat missions. Landsat 5 and 7 use values of digital numbers from 0 to 255. Landsat 8, though, uses digital numbers values from 0 to 4095, and they're rescaled to 55,000 gray levels. One point to remember when you look at the grayscale pixel imagery is the brighter the pixel, the higher the digital number. In order to compare data, and use data in analysis from different in imagery, the digital number needs to be corrected to convert to usable values for each band that will be used in an application. Comparing Landsat band data collected on different dates should, also, should be corrected. The digital numbers are based on solar irradiance energy on the date of collection, and these need to be converted to energy units. And then we have to correct for the Earth-Sun geometry, that is the distance from the Earth to the Sun at the date of collection, and the angle of incidence of the solar irradiance on the date of collection. The two types of sensors on the uh, two Landsat 8 mission, Operational Land Imager, or OLA data for bands 1 through 7 and 9, and the thermal infrared sensor for bands 10 and 11. So keep in mind they're two different uh, instruments and they have to be corrected using different equations. Just as a reminder too, is there's a lot of terms in this uh, concept module, more details in part one, but we're looking at solar irradiance or the energy from the sun as it is reflected from objects and then captured by the sensors at the top of the atmosphere. So the reflected energy at the top of the atmosphere for solar uh, reflectance. We need to do this because many times, and the value of Landsat is its continuity. So you can have dates from different and using different sensors. So if you're looking at land use change over time, you may be using Landsat 5 and Landsat 8, and you need to correct those. Often pre and post events such as wildfires, you will take an image from before the fire, perhaps during the fire, perhaps soon after, and then a long term after, and, and compare the, the imagery. You might want to take images from different paths and rows and mosaic them together. And uh, for the thermal bands, you might want to compare uh, brightness temperatures between different images on different dates. Software has to be used to make these corrections, and there are different corrections for the different Landsat missions. You can see the, a previous iGET YouTube video for how to make the uh, re radiance and reflectance using the Landsat 5 equations. So for the OLI data, uh, I want to stress that the USGS is already making uh, the correction to the top of atmospheric radiance as part of their pre-processing. So when you get the image, that has already been corrected. The data is not corrected, though, for the top of atmosphere reflectance and sun angle. So you need to make those corrections for the OLI data. And it's a two-step process. Step one, you're taking the digital numbers and converting them more or less to energy units. And step two, you're correcting for the uh, Earth-Sun geometry. So here's the equation for correcting the digital numbers for the OLI bands. 
Um, it is a two-step process, so you're going to take the digital numbers and return them to values of energy using this equation. Now, I want to note that all of the uh, input variables used in this equation and used when you use your software are provided in the metadata files. Now, the metadata file, when you download data, it comes in as a tar -Z -Z -G -G -Z, and you unzip it twice, and you end up with all of your TIFF band images plus a metadata file. That last one on the list here is the mtl.txt. It's a text file. If you right-click on it and then tell it to open with WordPad, you'll get a metadata file. This is the top half of that metadata file. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see the rest of it. It's in a word pad, and it gives you all the variables that you need to input for the use of those equations. This is step two of the OLI correction. It uses as an input the uh, output of the TIFF from the previous step, and then it's converting to the sun angle. So it's collecting, correcting for the distance and the tilt of the Earth. And again, see your metadata file for the values for the bands for the one you are using. Tiers is a bit different. Uh, the tiers data is changed to at satellite brightness temperatures, so the thermal. The digital numbers in step one are taken and converted to energy units. And then in step two, the output from step one is used to correct for top of radiance and cur uh, create a new TIFF that is at satellite brightness, brightness temperatures in Kelvin. So here's the step one equation. Again, your inputs are uh, from your metadata files. And you're using software, in this case, I was using ArcGIS 10.3 to input the various variables and get an output TIFF. That output then is used in this equation to get the uh, at satellite brightness temperatures in degrees Kelvin. Again, your metadata file comes with uh, the data that you need to use in this equation. For more help in really using these equations in the software in ArcGIS, there are two exercises of mapping wildfire and burn severity in Southern California. Uh, one version uses ArcGIS 10.2 and the equations for Landsat 5, which are different than those for Landsat 8. And the other that's being in uh, preparation and available soon is for ArcGIS 10.3 and the equations for Landsat 8. Just remember, if you use other software, make sure you look at the documentation as to what has been corrected or not corrected and what you need to do with that data. This is also true if you're not using Landsat, but you're losing, using other imagery, other resolution imagery. Make sure if you're provided that data that you also get the metadata file so you know what has been corrected or what needs to be corrected. These are the references used in this particular uh, part two of the concept module, mainly from item four, the Landsat 8 equations from the USGS. You might want to pause the video now and read the questions. These seven questions are based on the material provided in this YouTube video. After you've read them and, and answered them yourselves, you can continue on, and each of the questions are answered in at the end of this video. So if you don't want to see the answers before, uh, pause it now and then go on. Thank you.